Lead Engineer's Hollow Tape. Maintenance Issues After dome implantation, the brain on the above subject started exhibiting physical changes. The subject's dura turned some kind of a mottled brown color and started to break down after only 12 hours in the solution. Turns out, the biogel was tainted with sulfuric acid runoff from the dome polishing compound, and a reaction was occurring when they met. Unfortunately, this subject is a total loss. We'll just have to write it off as bad luck and switch polishing compounds immediately. We're continuing to have issues maintaining cohesion between the neural interface and the spinal column nerve endings. The nerves reject the connections faster than we can rebind them. I know we were hoping to keep the spinal columns intact for the robo-brains, but it's obviously not going to happen. I'd suggest we revert back to the original plan, the good old brain-in-a-jar prototype. It will reduce the amount of life support subsystems significantly as well as cut production time almost by a third. I'll submit my findings to the brass in Washington tomorrow. We got the first batch of robo-brains back from testing and they're a mess. Cracked domes, thrown treads, overloaded fusion piles, fried circuits, the list goes on and on. This particular issue is troubling, though. According to field users, some of the robo-brains are misinterpreting commands. The onboard brain seems to almost overthink these instructions and decide to rewrite them for efficiency purposes. Most of the time, this results in property damage or even a few civilian fatalities. I've gone over every square inch of the faulty units, and I can't find a thing wrong with them. I'm going to have to send this issue over to research and see what they can shake out. At least our department is in the clear on this one. One of the robo-brains rolled off the line with a faulty voice module. When it speaks, it's speaking in reverse. This troubled me, so I had them shut down the light line for almost eight hours while I checked the software for issues and then gave the audio output assembler a thorough diagnostic. I didn't find any issues, so I gave the all clear to resume assembly and marked it down as a glitch. I have no idea what would cause such a ridiculous issue, but if you ask me, I think one of the guys upstairs thought it would be funny. Hmm. Interesting.